Cassius, Clone Wars. Part 2, The Pirates of Valcor. Chapter 4. Moving silently through the corridors, Daros led the two Jedi towards the cargo tunnels. Does this ship have cameras? Not that I've seen. We should be safe, if we don't cause a commotion. If I had my comlink, we could contact our ship to send help. We're too far out for your signal to reach. Besides, the ship's comm relay has a failsafe that blocks any outgoing signals that are foreign to its own. Soon, they came to a blind corner. Peeking around, Daros made sure the coast was clear before ushering the Jedi to the cargo bay. Inside were many boxes and crates, filled with everything they had stolen. Treasures, foods, and all manner of valuables. You'd think this room would be guarded. This is about the time they drink and feast. There should only be a few of them patrolling. Follow me from below and remember to stay quiet. Daros lifted a metal grate as Cassius and Corbin stepped down into the tunnels. It'll be all right, Daros. We're right beneath your feet. Daros nodded, but Cassius could see that the boy was still scared. He closed the grate and exited the room with Corbin and Cassius following from below. The tunnels were dark, save for what dim orange light crept in from above. The tunnels held numerous crates, locked up and stored in a disorganized fashion. For pirates, they don't take care of their loot too well. Shh, I hear something. From up above, Cassius saw two of the pirates drinking and laughing. Boy, weren't you summoned to the captain? Yes, I was just on my way. Well, then you better hurry up before he gets mad. You know how he gets when he's mad. Yes, sir. Emptying his drink, the drunken pirate threw his empty bottle onto the floor, shattering it as pieces of glass fell through the floor on top of Cassius and Corbin. Uh, pick that up first. Daros nodded and scooped up what pieces of glass he could before continuing on his way. Poor kid. We'll get him out of here. Don't worry. They continued to follow Daros, carefully stepping over the jumbled cargo as they moved. Cassius looked above and kept his eyes on Daros. They couldn't fail here. This boy deserved better than the life of a pirate slave. But they needed to get to the captain first. Soon, they reached a dead end. Looking up, they saw Daros look around and back down. These tunnels won't lead to the captain's quarters. I'm going there to see him. Head to the left and find the barracks. If you're quick, you should be able to get out before the rest of them return. What exactly do you think you're doing, boy? Daros quickly shot up. C captain Kantu, I was just coming to see you. The captain glared at Daros before looking down into the grated floor beneath their feet. Cassius and Corbin kept to the shadows, staying quiet as possible. Dear boy, what exactly were you looking at? I, I thought I saw a mine knock down in the cargo tunnel. I think I'm just tired. A mine knock? Hmm. Well, we don't want any of those loose on board, do we? Captain Kantu pressed a button on his comlink. Attention, men. We seem to have a problem with some Minox loose in the cargo tunnels. What say you all to a bit of sport? Ten Karuska gems to whoever catches them. And if you happen to find any other vermin, bring them to me. Cassius felt his heart race. Now, why don't you come with me, child? We have much to discuss. Daros was pulled by his wrist behind the captain, away from their sight. This whole ship is going to be looking for us. We have to get out of these tunnels. The Padawans moved swiftly along the tunnels. It wasn't long before they heard the laughter of drunken pirates as they crept closer. Come on out, little Minox. Don't be shy. The pirates made little clicking noises with their tongues as they scoured the tunnels. Soon, Cassius and Corbin reached another dead end. They could hear the pirates closing in. We're trapped. Cassius looked around for anything they could use to defend themselves. Suddenly, he saw the stuffed head of a creature on the wall. A wampa head. And nearby, a white pelt. Okay, I've got a very stupid idea. But it's the only one I've got. What is it? 
Cassius took the wampa head from its mount and placed it onto a large rolling chest before covering it with the pelt. We send this at them and try to distract them. How is it that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard you say after knowing you nearly 20 years? It's all I can think of right now. <sighs> Fine. When we die, though, remember your little puppet show caused it. Cassius and Corbin hid, and soon they heard footsteps nearby. Here, little critters. We'll make this nice and painless. As one of the pirates shined his light into the darkness, he found himself face to face with the Wampa Head. Shouting in surprise, he leapt back as Cassius and Corbin used the force to shove their makeshift monster towards the group of pirates, knocking them over. Wampa! Help! Cassius saw his opportunity and grabbed one of the blasters from the downed pirates. You idiots! It's them! Shoot them! Cassius fired off a few shots, hitting two of the pirates directly in their chests. The pirates returned fire, however, as Cassius ducked behind a pile of cargo. Now what? Cassius looked around frantically. Running along the side of the wall was a pipeline carrying steam from the ship's engine. Cassius quickly looked over his shoulder and fired at the pipe, bursting it. The steam quickly filled the tunnels, obscuring their view. Push through! Keep your head down! Cassius and Corbin quickly charged through, knocking over the blinded pirates who fired in every direction, winging Cassius in his shoulder. Cassius grimaced in pain as they continued to run. As they cleared through the cloud of steam, Corbin saw an open hatch in the floor above and leapt through with Cassius. You all right? No, but I'll live. Ah, carapace, that hurt. Well, don't cry about it now. We have to find Doros. Right. This way. Cassius and Corbin ran through the ship as quickly as they could. They could hear the alarms sounding throughout the corridors. The pirates knew they had escaped now. They needed to get to Daros. Fast. As the two Jedi continued their frantic search, Daros sat in a chair in the captain's quarters. Kantu sat mere feet from him, staring intently. I've given you much, Daros. A place to live, food, security... I even put you in charge of a very important mission earlier today, and you thank me by stabbing me in the back. Sir, I didn't... Kantu reached over with his lanky arm and struck the boy on his cheek. The force knocked him to the floor. You will address me as your captain, boy. Daros hoisted himself to his feet, not daring to look the captain in the eyes. I should have known you would betray your family. But it's not your fault. The Jedi are predators amongst the flock. What did they promise you, Daros? That you would be free? That you'd be taken away from here? Do you honestly believe they care about you? After you got them captured? After what happened to their soldiers? If given the opportunity, they would leave without you. They... they, they said they wanted to help me. Of course they did, poor child. They told you what you wanted to hear. After all, you have a good heart, and they used that heart of yours to turn you against the only people you have. Daros began to tear up. He didn't want to believe it. Kantu reached over and gently held the boy. Oh, my little friend, you mean nothing to them. You're simply a means to an end. Kantu suddenly felt a sharp pain in his ribs and fell back as Daros used a piece of the broken bottle he had picked up earlier to stab Kantu. <sighs> so, you would side with the Jedi. You don't care about me. You bring nothing but suffering. You're a monster. Kantu laughed and stood up, holding his side. <laughs> If you want to see a monster, I will show you a monster. Kantu lurched forward as four extra arms sprouted from his back. His devilish grin grew as his jaws dislocated, revealing a large, gaping maw full of razor-sharp teeth. His already imposing stature grew even larger. Now, boy, I will show you what true suffering is.